Hey guys, how's it going? It's Ray again and welcome back to my channel. So first of all, thank you again for joining the channel. I really appreciate your time. And today I wanted to ask you to subscribe to the channel because it's really going to help me in bringing you a lot more content. So what we're going to be doing today is going through the procedural generation script that I implemented previously. We've been doing quite a few videos on procedural generation. What I want to do today is convert what we had, refactor it and show you what I have at the end, which is going to be using scriptable objects. So instead of setting all the different parameters through the inspector where it's basically set in private variables behind the scenes, we're going to be using scriptable objects, which is going to be serializing that data to the disk and therefore allow us to create multiple files that are going to control some of those parameters. So let's jump into Unity and start working on it. All right, guys, welcome back. So what I want to show you is what I implemented for the most part on the refactoring process and what new features I added in this video. So if you remember on the previous video, and this is basically how the new one looks like, if we go to the previous one, it's going to be the grid example, and we click on grid, and I hit play. You remember that this, we hit play, and we change the values on the grid script. Basically, it regenerates the procedural structure, and I can go in and change some of these settings. We can go, of course, we can change the width, and everything is happening in real time. So, so this is cool and it works really well for certain scenarios, but what if you wanted to do that in the editor or what if you wanted to save these settings in a file because you wanted to keep control of them? Maybe, you know, you have multiple levels and level one, you wanted to create a one, you know, instead of duplicating this file multiple times, this game object multiple times, we could use a different implementation to control some of these parameters, which is what I'm going to show you on the on the new scene. So on the new scene, if we go into grid with procedural params examples and we double click on it. So the cool thing about this implementation is I don't have to hit play to regenerate it. And not only that, it also uses scriptable objects to serialize these fields into the file system. So the cool thing is I can go ahead and OK, I want to re regenerate this and it creates a new structure. I still have one bug for some reason it's not cleaning up itself really well, even though I'm telling it to do that. So let me just delete this. And then I'll just reset the seed. And, and you can see that still works. I'll fix that before you watch the next video. But that's what's cool about this is I'm not hitting play and I'm still regenerating the, the structures. The other things that I added is because we're using scriptable objects, I can, go, I can go ahead and change the parameters here. I can say, okay, I want to use procedural parameters underscore two. And that is its own, its own you know, structure. And the cool thing about that is I can keep duplicating these objects and then basically changing the parameters. Let's say that you wanted to do that one more time. The, so this one is underscore three. We go into the grid with params associated with the new one. Then on this one, let's say that we wanted to go, maybe the height needs to be much smaller. And then we can regenerate new colors or new patterns. So you're gonna see that that gives us some really cool patterns, and maybe let's go let's go on the high a little bit more, so we can see we can get a little bit little more depth. And that was the wrong parameter. I need to change the max random parameter. There you go. So you can get a little bit of shadow, shadows. All right. So let's say that we do that, and let's say that we want to go back to number two. So number two still works, and I wanted to go to number one. And number one still works. So, so that's one of the powers of using scriptable objects versus using, you know, the private variables that I show you that we did on the previous video. So the other cool thing about this is I can also, because I'm running this in the editor, I can also change it here versus changing it when we run the game. So just to walk you through a few things that I added. So we're now using scriptable objects on the parameters and also create a new script called grid with params. The other thing that I also added was you can now tell that every every shape has a different height. And that's because I'm generating, I added a new variable. And that variable is called max random height. In the previous video, we had a max random height offset. And that one is different. So that's why I wanted to, so if I change this one to two. So what I'm saying here is that every shape is going to have a max random height of two. Where on this one, I'm saying, every shape is going to have a max random high offset of one. 
And the, the difference between those two is one is changing the offset from the, you know, from the original position. You can now see that there is a lot of white space beneath it. So if I go back to one, if I change this one, it's actually changing the random height that is assigned to each each shape. So you can now see we go here. We wanted to get taller buildings, so that's how we can that's how we can accomplish that. So I'm gonna set change it back to let's go back to let's see something like that, and then also you know if I change the random seed, I I love playing with this because it gives me a lot of different colors. So let me go down a little bit more and show you. Let's go to two, and let's see. Let's actually go to one. So so this gives you different patterns, right? And you can see different colors that are getting generated. Another another helpful feature that I also added is now this is a slider, the procedural materials to generate. And right now what I'm telling the system to do is to generate 22 random materials. So that's going to be the max number of material materials that get generated. So if I want to go to one, that's only going to generate one material for this model, for this procedural generation. If I go two, we need to use the slider. If I go to, yeah, so you can see this one, I'm only generating three colors. That's why you're seeing, you know, there's not a lot of variety. And as I go up, this is starts to you know, look a lot more fun because it's generating a lot more materials. So I still have the default materials available. So if you wanted to generate those, you know, yourself and change the size, you can change those and set them yourself in here. So I can say, okay, I want to use one and then assign the material yourself. You can do that. I'm going to set it back to zero and then generate the procedural ones because I think those ones look cool. And But if you wanted to use just one color or two colors or two different materials, then you can use the default materials instead. And I can also change the you know the width of the grid just like I did before if we wanted to go higher you can you can do that I can also do that here and change the procedural materials so just keep in mind if you go higher it's gonna generate more shapes therefore it's gonna take more time to generate so let's go ahead and set it back to something like 15 and we can we can also get and there we go and also change the height so we can go go a little bit higher and we can do something like that there we go I also added a, a couple more properties one is to make this shape static basically if you don't want to if you're not gonna be moving this shape you can make him you know make him static and the the other one that I also added so you can ch change that to true or false I also added the should generate rigid bodies let me uncheck that and then the should generate rigid bodies is really really cool because you can hit play and then it basically will add rigid bodies to the simulation so if i hit play and we can see that those they should be falling and that's the that's what we saw and it looks like if i regenerate it because they're colliding there we go you kind of see how that so the other cool thing about these is say that I wanted I wanted them to to collide with each other, and I could change the width, and you can see that now they're colliding with each other, and now we're creating a different simulation. What if I don't want them to collide with each other? I want them to maybe go back down to you know a lower number, still generate the the rigid bodies. You cannot see. So this is really helpful because during playtime, runtime, I can change the settings and see how it affects, how it's affecting everything. As soon as I click here, the inspector is gonna detect the change and it's gonna regenerate everything. And that's what you're seeing. So, so there, there's a lot of a lot of things going on behind the scenes to to make sure this works. So the other thing that I wanted to show you, let me just change this back to something like one. If I go, if I want to go. Actually, if we want to go really high, rigid, regenerate rigid bodies, then let me change this to one. And we can do something like that. And then you can kind of see how some of them are falling. I can now change the width. We're getting more. We're getting a lot more. We can change the offset. And now see how they're they're falling. So so there are unlimited 
you know, limited numbers of simulations that you create, you can create with this implementation. So I'm going to go back and just reset all these parameters and then show you how we can assign another parameter scriptable object to this. So I'm going to say reset and we, we can change. So that's the other feature that this has. You can change everything back. And like I said, on this implementation, I have a small issue. So let's just go ahead and delete it and go here, regenerate it. And then of course I need to do to 12, 14, and then let's change the, maybe this one will be three or four. Maybe we'll just use this slider. There we go. Just do 14 by 14. There you go. And we can get some more. Maybe on the materials we can do nine. And so that we can get some cool cool effects. So the other ones that I also wanted to mention was the offset, like I like I was explaining to you. I can make changes to those, offset them in each direction. That still should all work just fine. Also the max width, like I was showing you, you can change that as well. There we go. And, and I still have to do some changes because if I change this, and it looks like we're colliding with some of them. So there's some changes to be made on this one. So let me go ahead and change this back to, to I'll just do one, one, one. On this one, we'll do five. And on the offset, we can just say offset of one, 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 one. So there won't be really any offset. There we go. Go back to make him a little bit taller. Something like that, and there we go. I think I think that looks cool. So so that's kind of a, an overview of some of the settings so that we added. And let's see what else do we added. Margin between shapes is another one that I added as well. And and that one is basically similar to the offset, ex except you can, you know, you can see the values. You can see the values here as x, y, and z. The, the difference is this is actually getting applied to the whole thing. So you can see that I'm offsetting the entire, the entire structure on the Y axis versus offsetting the individual pieces. If I do Z, so I can also do the same thing. So I'm offsetting each section versus offsetting the entire structure. So you're going to see how that gives you a different look. Let's go ahead and say one, one, one. And I'm going to revisit some of these settings because I don't know that we'll need all of these, a lot of this has been experimentation. And there we go. So that's basically everything that I added on this on this new implementation. Let me go lower. So one thing that I wanted to that I wanted you to know is that I'm gonna be checking this thing to source control. And I'm also gonna be posting a link to this in Patreon. So if you wanna find me in Patreon and support me in Patreon, that will be awesome because I'm gonna be basically giving this code for free. So if you have any other questions, please let me know. And also keep in mind that on the next video, we'll go through and look at the code. And I wanna basically explain to you how this works behind the scenes and how you can also you know, make changes if you needed to do that or create your own implementation. All right guys, thank you very much for watching this video. I really appreciate your time. And if you have any questions, please let me know. Also be sure to check out gamedev.net because they have amazing resources for game developers either you're starting now as a game developer or an advanced game developer, they have resources for you. And also find me in Patreon where I'm basically posting information about what I'm doing behind the scenes in the channel and also posting early access to source code. So thank you very much, guys.